Mark Edit's linked data tools have changed significantly over the last year and a half, um, starting from uh, essentially a tool for um, creating um, URI endpoints in uh, Mark records um, using hard coded um, processes to one that's now governed uh, primarily through a configuration file that is at this point ready for users to start adding. Um, their own content to uh, Mark Edit. Uh, so I wanted to um, just uh, take a couple minutes to talk about uh, some of the things that have changed and look at how um, users can uh, update the rules file to include their own resources and kind of the assumptions that are made around that. <coughs> so the Mark Edit's link tool, linking tool is um, found either under Mark X, under uh, Mark Next, under link identifiers or it's actually a part of the main application under tools and uh, link data tools. Tools primarily um, for creating um, URIs um, in records for uh, control vocabularies. Uh, the rules file is primarily populated with um, the generation of subfield zeros within specific field elements. Uh, however, because the rules file um, specifies all of the placement, users can actually use this to generate um, URIs into any particular subfield code. So as the MARC format evolves, um, or um, the rules file here is primarily tagged for um, MARC 21, um, could easily be converted for support for other MARC flavors. Um, you should be able to find that it's flexible enough to be able to um, support however the uh, um, linked data um, URIs uh, can, should be embedded into your record set. Uh, so what I have is a couple of records. Let me explain what, what each of these settings down here does. Originally these were hard-coded settings. Um, now they automatically detect main entry and subject IDs as well as the 3xx fields. Um, are all rules files based. Um, auto detection um, allows Mark Edit to read the, um, the uh, index codes from Mark fields um, as well as the rules file to determine where a control vocabulary is coming from. Uh, Mark Edit will parse data from that control vocabulary if the vocabulary has an endpoint available to it. Uh, there are other options um, also. Uh, there's one for working with OCLC's VOF. Uh, I don't actually like using that service. That's uh, not really, um, doesn't really serve the same purpose as, say, linking directly to a control vocabulary. I, I see it more as an aggregator, but I know some people like to link to it. And there are places where uh, MarkEdit will use VOF as the primary endpoint when um, a national library. Um, doesn't uh, either have plans or currently have um, a uh, endpoint available. Um, those are all encoded already into the uh, rules file and so they're part of the automatic detection routines. Um, so let's look at the kind of data that Mark Edit processes. So um, I threw together just a couple of simple um, test files. Uh, the first one here, uh, so you can see the different types of data that can be handled, um, is one that has um, elements embedded from the German National Library. So here we have a subfield zero that already exists. Um, we have a code here and we have the control number and that control number can be um, linked to um, a URI. Um, Mark Edit will prefer um, URIs in subfield zeros and so when it runs across data elements like these uh, if the rules file incorporates a pattern that instructs the application on how to generate um, a link to a uh, machine actionable uh, resource, it will replace the current subfield zero and generate a URI in its place. Uh, and I'll show you what that, how that works in the, uh, the rules file. Uh, Mark Edit's rules file is XML based. Uh, field processing is defined in the top where you have field, subfields, uh, where the URIs can be placed as well as any special instructions for normalization. Uh, and that includes being able to set data at the indicator level. Um, you'll also see that Mark Edit includes a number of authority and bibliographic tags. Um, those are tagged in field type. Um, you also have 
um, the ability to process the 880 fields. So, uh, so linking field in Mark 21, so Mark Edit can read the 880 field and determine which rules should be used. We have collection blocks. Collection blocks define the collections that Mark Edit understands um, and can process against. Uh, the German National Library, for example, is here. Um, they don't have a linked data endpoint per se, but for most records that include G and Ds, uh, the subfield zero is included with a um, control number. Uh, the um, National Library has a pattern for how you can create a link to um, a uh, potentially machine actionable endpoint. So by using the pattern label and the pattern element and the label element, we can define from our edit that when it runs across um, an element set with a GND, it's going to go ahead and evaluate the data for pattern replacement for something like um, FAST where you have both a URI for being able to do queries but also potentially pattern replacement. You can include both and MarkEdit will evaluate the uh, current data in the field um, and make the appropriate judgments. So here's our, our German National Library definitions. Uh, if we go ahead and run this through the linking tool, I will just run it from here. Select these two options, process the data. Application goes through and starts looking at the various endpoints that can be, the various fields that can be evaluated. Anything with a subfield zero and a URI already will be ignored. Anything that doesn't um, will get uh, processed. And so if we go down here, we see that the German National Library elements um, have been uh, replaced appropriately uh, based on the patterns been defined within the collection file. tool also handles authority records. So here's a set of authority records uh, from the National Library of Medicine. Uh, the collections file and the, uh, the rules file defines which fields should be um, linked based on um, information about uh, the discussions ongoing at the PCC. Um, so we can again go to here and look at our build tools, just select those options, process the data, and mark edit will again read each of the, the fields, and based on the information in the field um, uh, and any index data that might be there, uh, consult the appropriate um, collection data file um, to retrieve information about how the data should be queried um, against the uh, individual collection resource. Um, For uh, some fields, there are some services it takes longer than others. Um, since MarkEdit's doing them all together, and in a record set like this, it may end up doing um, per record uh, 10 or 15 uh, lookups. Um, it can take some time. Uh, the tool has um, an option for um, tracking how long it takes, and if the time takes too long, uh, the application will actually um, give you an option to cancel the process and pick it up later when maybe there's not the uh, traffic. Uh, the tool also does a couple of other things, particularly around the Library of Congress. Um, when working with the Library of Congress, the uh, application monitors HTTP status codes and working with their office, um, the application uh, will respect when um, the Library of Congress passes a status code that says that um, uh, too many requests are happening on the system and will actually uh, pause the requesting uh, process uh, so that it um, will only handle uh, data when um, the resource is um, more readily available. Uh, so if we take a quick peek here, we can look and see um, for items, so here are endpoints that are generated. We can see ones where nothing's gotten picked up. Uh, then we go down here and we can see ones where it's had more luck uh, creating um, uh, URIs against the systems. Um, so the way that the tool works is if materials are pre-coordinated, it's going to pass the pre-coordination on. Uh, the tool will um, normalize based on information provided uh, by the user for normalization. Uh, it does a fairly good job, uh, uh, particularly against all of the databases that have been profiled. And so we can um, go ahead and look and see um, what's been profiled and what hasn't. For authority records, 1xx fields aren't profiled in the rules file. Uh, that was a discussion point um, 
um, to PCC folks. Um, and so for right now, they're not uh, profiled, but you can see the, the process. Um, you can handle bibliographic data sets. So this is a set of bibliographic data sets from the National Library of Medicine. See how many records are here? 17. Uh, so we can run through this set too. and send the application. Um, and again, it's going to process. Um, we send a lot of requests to the National Library of Medicine since these are primarily MeSH headings, but as well the Library of Congress since there's going to be a mixture of Library of Congress requests as well as materials for um, uh, concepts around the 3 3x fields. Um, and so we can see what the end result of, of that process is here in a second. Uh, 15, 16, and 17 records. And if we take a look, we can see URIs are automatically generated into the record set. Uh, National Library of Medicine mesh headings are created. Um, so we can see this program uh, behaves appropriately. Uh, and the last one we'll look at is um, uh, vernacular materials. So in this case, uh, the program uh, can actually um, look up in the 880 field. Uh, if the 880 is a, in this case, we have an 880 field that's coming from the Library of Congress, depending on how. Um, the individual resource returns back information. Uh, MarkEdit will um, potentially uh, create a link to it. And in the case of the Library of Congress, the way that they retrieve back um, materials around um, uh, transliterated and um, uh, alternative uh, 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 and native language scripts um, will actually generate uh, URIs, um, which may or may not be appropriate, um, but from the perspective of the application, they look like the same thing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and run this set really quickly. I think there's 15, 20 records in this set. Uh, I should have taken a look before I started it up. So let's see, we're up to 19, and I, 20, 21, 22, 23, or looks like there are a few more records in the set than I thought there were. Um, let's hope not many more. That's 27, 28. Uh, I think this might have been a 50 record set. Anyway, so while that set's working, we'll go back to the uh, collections file. So the language file, the rules file, this is all, um, each of these uh, collection sets have been validated and worked with them. Um, uh, you can see that for um, users who want to add new items to the collection file, um, there's really just two criteria. Um, the criteria are that the um, collections file has, the, the resource has to be a JSON-based file. Um, it has to be a Sparkle. Um, so in this case, this was a user-defined resource. Um, this is for the Japanese Diet Library back to that in a second. And um, the resource elements we have to define, this is the, uh, the public name so that we know what it is. This is the label that's going to be embedded into the subfield 2 or whatever the subfield is where the indexing is embedded. Uh, the URI to the Sparkle endpoint, you'll see that the search terms themselves um, are set as a mnemonic. So this is where MarkEdit will um, embed the search terms into the Sparkle query and it will encode the data um, based on information it receives on how data should be encoded. Uh, the results come back as JSON and you tell MarkEdit how to read the JSON at return. Um, so in this case the path, so the MarkEdit knows where to go get the URI or at least to look for it. The other option is you can add um, these pattern replacements to the application. Um, so the German National Library, this is an example of one added um, as a pattern replacement. Uh, again, you're looking for um, the label, the name of the resource, and then the pattern um, for how a item that exists in a subfield zero, um, an identifier would be replaced. A mark edit is evaluating those identifiers to make sure that they're not already um, URLs um, or that they don't look like something other than a control number or some kind of a value that should be able to be um, uh, linked to. Uh, so let's go back here and we can see that um, again uh, if we look at the resource set we see that um, identifiers are generated, uh, fast headings resources are generated, genre terms, um, and then here 
we see that um, the 880, uh, the way that markedit works is that it reads in the rules file the 880's linking field, which tells it how to read the data in the 880. So in this case, the 880 is determined to be a 610 field. Um, it reads the indicators, and then based on the indicators provided, um, it passes that information to um, a um, particular uh, control vocabulary and then uh, processes based on the results that come back. Um, so that's how uh, those work. And we can see that uh, processes that data. All right. So let's say you want to work with the tool. So how do you go about working with the tool? Well, there's a couple of different ways. Um, you can use the graphical interface and use the linked data tools as standalone. Um, like we've been doing in the video, you can run it from the Mark Editor, uh, Link Data Tools. Um, you can also run it from uh, the command line. Uh, the command line uh, application has um, a set of parameters you can pass in order to generate um, the uh, linked data output. Uh, if you want to edit the data files, um, there's a place here called Edit Link Data Resources. Um, one is to edit the rules file. Select that, it'll open it, the rules file um, into whatever your XML editor happens to be. In my case, it's Oxygen. Um, if you want to see how the language, how do you edit the profiles, you can click on this link and Mark Edit will uh, pass you out to a page in the Mark Edit knowledge base, which defines uh, how to edit Mark Edit's rules file and provides all the description of the various elements that are part of the uh, rules file. And um, one of the things I've been trying to do is separate the rules file from the rest of the application. Uh, I periodically update the rules file. You can actually go here and check to see if you have the most current rules file by clicking on the update rules file button. And Mark Edit will go out to the um, server and check to see if you have um, the most current rules file available. And if you don't, it'll download it into your system and make a copy of your existing rules file just in case for some reason you want to go backwards um, and use that app, that part of the application. Um, so that gives you uh, the ability to work, um, at least experiment with um, the concept of doing entification within your MARC records and hopefully in an easy way to do it, um, especially around um, uh, bibliographic and uh, authority records. Um, again, since the tool is all rules files based, um, if you want to add additional fields to the application's validation routines, you can certainly edit the rules files. So for example, um, when we looked at the authority records, um, the 100, the 1xx data isn't linked. Um, this was partly a discussion with the PCC that the there's no need to since they're self-referential. Self um, if you wanted a URI in that field, you could certainly go into the rules file and change it so that the 1xx fields are processed as both bibliographic and authority records. Um, same is true for adding collections. Um, I have an, an inkling that local um, uh, linked data resources um, will be important, and so this is a way for you to manage your local resources as well as pick up stuff that I haven't grabbed. Um, I work with a number of um, catalogers, and we'll be adding more of these to the application as we go. Um, right now, I believe that the current set that are defined, um, I think this is missing some of the VOF stuff, but uh, we have Library of Congress, a number of Library of Congress endpoints, children's subjects, uh, source geographic names, um, genre terms, and whatnot. We also have uh, the Gettys Art and Architecture, Thesaurus, uh, their Ulan database uh, resources, mesh headings, fast headings, uh, the Japanese Diet Library, Israel, the National Library of Israel, um, name authority file through VOF, and then the German National Library. So there's roughly in the neighborhood of, I think, about 18 or 19 endpoints that are currently defined. Um, and the application tries to be very friendly um, to these particular service providers. Um, I've, I've talked to most of them um, and tried to work with them to um, uh, determine how uh, their services um, can provide feedback back to the application to um, uh, let MarkEdit know 
uh, when too much data is being sent to the resource. Uh, that way the application can th throttle itself um, and try and be a, um, a good citizen when it comes to uh, downloading uh, lots of data from lots of uh, uh, various endpoints. Um, so this is where um, the tool is right now. Um, like I said, it's, it's constantly evolving. Um, it's currently the basis um, for a number of other resources within the application. Uh, there's an authorities resource that's being built on top of the linked data platform, um, as well as a reconciliation service that I'm experimenting with um, that will use the rules file and the linked data platform to um, uh, work on reconciliation of, uh, of, of vocabularies. Um, I'm also working on uh, taking that rules file uh, and reimagining it in Unimark um, to see what it would look like in, in a Unimark context, uh, partly because the, the groups that are currently discussing um, embedding URI data in MARC records really aren't thinking outside of MARC 21. Um, and it's a good exercise to make sure that the rules file is flexible enough to, to be able to support not just MARC 21-isms, but um, the much wider range of um, of MARC flavors that are currently available, uh, particularly as we think about how we transition uh, from MARC to other resources. Um, the source code behind the linked data platform is on uh, my GitHub page, although um, one of the things that I'll probably be doing um, in the near future will be pulling out uh, all of the processing code that goes with it. Um, the way that the application works is there's a linked data platform, which is really just how MarketEdit handles the interaction with and the normalization of data um, within the context of these endpoints, um, processing Sparkle data and whatnot. Um, there's a separate process that, um, uh, that's really kind of more application specific, um, but may be of interest as, uh, as a proof of concept. Um, that demonstrates how to read the, uh, the configuration file, the rules file, um, and then go about processing the various MARC data in a, in a very MARC agnostic kind of way, as well as the transformation of data from um, uh, into Unicode and the various encoding mechanisms that happen. So uh, there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes. Uh, like I said, some of it's very application specific, but it might be interesting to see. Um, other parts are, are linked data uh, platform specific, and those are um, currently up and available for folks to, to play around with. Um, if you don't have Mark Edit, but you want to look at the rules file, the rules file is currently up and available for people to play around with, uh, or at least look at. <clears throat> if you go to, to the applications website, uh, software, and then it's um, uh, uh, rules file, it's a uh, linked data profile. Uh, the application will link you to the most current version of the uh, linked data profile that's currently sitting up waiting for download. Uh, and you're certainly welcome to uh, take a look at it and, and offer suggestions. You'll notice there are a handful of fields that are commented out occasionally. That has to do with um, discussion currently happening. Um, sometimes these things change, sometimes I miss subfield codes. And so it's if uh, um, you have an interest and you want to take a look at it and you think that there's a mistake, um, or that there's something missing, uh, feel free to let me know and I will update the rules file um, for everybody so that everybody has an opportunity to uh, uh, get the changes. But you're certainly welcome to make the changes locally and play around with it. Um, so uh, that's how the tool currently works. Um, hopefully folks will um, continue, to with exper continue to experiment with it and provide feedback.